Hello everybody. Welcome to our English class. Well, in today's class, we will learn about information transfer. And now look at the picture. You can find the three lights first and that is visual. And what we can understand by looking at that visual is when you see that signboard red, usually we will stop. Then we will look at the yellow. Then we will look and we will wait. And then we find that green one. Then we will proceed and you can go. So this is the information that we can take from our that visual signboard. So what exactly is information transfer is? How best we can change the information from visual to verbal or from verbal to visual. Well, let us look at the various uh, formats in this one. Basically, this information transfer can be in different ways. Like first of all, we will find in our exams, especially we can find bar diagrams or pie charts, then tree, tree diagram or a flow chart or tables and line graphs. These are the six major varieties of uh, uh, information transfer what we can find and we can do in the examination. And especially in our exams, we may get either a bar diagram or pie chart. Occasionally, we are getting tree diagram and flow charts. Okay. So now let's look at what are the useful phrases we have to use and how we have to begin. Though it's a paragraph, how best we can do it creatively. Let us check it out. The first one we have divided even if even if it is a paragraph also, we can divide into three parts. The first one is intro where you can talk about the given by pie chart or bar diagram depicts the information regarding you will be given the topic you can write there and you can say the pie chart is divided into how many parts four or five and then it highlights about you can go you can use any of these expressions and in the body part you can say from the pie chart we can infer that you have to analyze after looking at that uh, uh, visual diagram and even the verbal text also. So a lot of uh, expressions and useful phrases can be used like almost all or a large number of or the majority or many of the people or more than like this and some a few or one or two or less than you can give this kind of things. And the last one is a small or minority or almost none, no one or less than. So this is how you can use these kind of expressions. And finally, when we want to conclude a paragraph, you can say as can be seen from the above pie chart or nearly or you can say most of the people felt that or you can say however, nearly one third of people believed that or about dash percent of were of the opinion that. So this is how we can use these kind of expressions. Now, let's look at the pie chart and based on these uh, instructions, I have asked my egg uh, Nyansai to do this work. And now let's look at this, how nicely he has changed that. This is from the actual 10th class students, how well he has transformed the data. Let's check it now. So this is all about preferred devices of internet users age 16 or above 16. And now the question will be study the pie chart and the verbal text and now write a paragraph according to the information depicted in the chart or diagram above. Now you can find smartphones 33%, laptops 30% and desktops, I mean you can say 16% and tablets 21%. You have read this information. Now, let us check how well we can do this. We have talked about the various expressions to use. Now, let us check. All right. The given pie chart depicts the information regarding preferred devices of internet users age 16 and above. In the present generation, everyone is habituated to technology. The technology is diversified Nowadays, thus we have different gadgets 
in the present day situation some of them are named here number one smartphone two laptop three tablet and the fourth one is desktop now the given pie chart shows the reports of survey conducted we can see that there are four most preferred devices okay from the pie chart we can infer that this is the body we are talking from the pie chart we can infer that smartphones are the most preferred to the internet users in the above mentioned age group that means 33 percent almost all one by third of the internet users of the age group 16 and 18 or 16 and above and it is followed by laptops with 30 percent of the internet users preference the chart continues with tablets at third place with 21 percent of users preferring them and the chart ends with desktops with a very low preference of 16 percent due to some of its cons the being difficult uh, in portability the chart can be simply represented as smartphones 30 33 percent preference laptops 30 percent preference tablets 21 percent preference and desktops 16 percent preference right now we can see how we can conclude this besides many advantages of desktops due to its only main disadvantage of being difficult to move it from one place to another desktops were given less preference by those students and we can also include that the present generation is getting used to portability convenience and comfort so such conditions are the main reasons for the highest priority given to smartphones and smartphones are not so huge and way less and are very convenient to carry and use so these qualities of smartphones are the reason for their priority moreover nowadays smartphones are most affordable than any other devices so the survey reveals the fact that many participants are accessing the internet outside their home as smartphones and laptops are portable devices so the ranking of the devices highly preferred are number one smartphone number two laptops number three tablets number four desktops well these are all the things that can be inferred from the above mentioned pie chart hope you can understand how well a 10th class student has done this and this is done by a gyan sai after getting some kind of instructions by taking a lot of useful expressions well now let's look at the another one the bar chart so in the bar chart especially there will be some kind of comparisons from one year to other year and there will be increase or decrease so this is how we can see that and when we take when we talk about this uh, when we take a bar diagram so we will see what are the various expressions we can use like the bar chart is all about or the number increases or grows up or grows by or you can say the number decreases or goes down or sinks by or you can say the number doesn't change or remains stable so we can say that year by year there is an increase in these are some of the expressions that we can use in addition to what we can use from the given useful expression that we use in our pie chart well now let's look at this bar chart and this is all about number of students in interested in different games in the schools so you can think about the right area there are around 350 students and you can look at the games badminton volleyball kirkal kabaddi and cricket so you got you just try to look at that and you just think about your analytical ability after looking this picture what comes to your mind right and whenever you go with a pie chart or a bar diagram the first thing you have to talk about is what is it about and what is the highest or majority of people giving a preference and the least and in the meanwhile you can talk about the other things but these 
three areas should be kept in your mind while doing this information transfer. So now let's look at this one. In the given bar graph, we can see the interests of students of different schools in different games. The survey conduct shows the games preferred by students. There are five games that are considered in the survey. The games that were considered in the survey are number one cricket, kabaddi, coco, volleyball and badminton. Right now we can see. We can infer that cricket being an international game is preferred by the maximum number of students. That means uh, around 225 students. Then comes the Indian game Kabaddi, which gained international popularity recently with 150 students give, gave preference after watching maybe Pro Kabaddi and all. And Coco and Volleyball share the same preference with around 100 students each interested in them. And the other game, Badminton, which is also an international game that is gaining popularity from the recent years is preferred by only 75 students, right? We can conclude that cricket stands at the first place, then Kabaddi comes into shine at the second place. Third place is shared by two games, namely Coco and Volleyball. Badminton stood last with a few students interested in the mentioned game, maybe because of the cost effectiveness, the bats and the cocks, it might be the reason. So we can say cricket is a popular game that can be played by majority of the students. And these, there are many opportunities for the skilled players, like the most popular IPL matches. And this craze of cricket or cricket mania is the first reason for it being opted as an interest of many students. So the other go games also have their own reasons for their priority, but the other games could not compete with cricket with having different formats. This is all about a bar diagram. And now we will look at a flow chart, the third area. And if you can look at this flow chart and study the flow chart and write the paragraph, and give instructions how to send an email with an attachment. So look at the steps clearly. This is very clearly. Open email, click compose, type recipient's email ID, click attach file option, I'm sorry, type subject, type body of email, and click attach file option, then browse file from computer, and recheck the mail, and then finally click and send. So this is the flow chart. Now you will have a clear idea. Whenever you are doing a flow chart, first keep it in mind that we usually use V1 plus object. That means most of them, most of the times we have to use imperative sentences. Okay. Now let us check it. The flow chart represents the process of sending an email with an attachment. Email is a great way of communicating with friends business people, officials, and family members at the touch of a button, no matter where in the world you are. Well, now let us, let us look at the body. The following steps show you how to send an email using a Gmail account. What all you need is a computer or smartphone with an active internet connection and an email account to send and receive emails. Now. Let us take the steps. Follow these steps, step by step instructions to send an email with an attachment. And when you are doing this one, you can write first, next, later, and finally. You can use these uh, linkers. So the first one we can say, first log into your Gmail account so that you can find the dashboard of your mail account. Then click on Compose. A new blank email window will open up. In the two box, type the recipient's email ID. And then type the subject in the subject box to give the recipient an idea of the topic 
of your email like a heading and then type your message in the main body field of your email. So now click on the attach files option then browse the required file from your computer then recheck the mail once again whether the attached file is the right one or not. When you are happy with your email click the blue send button at the bottom of the compose window. Right? The email you have sent will now be stored in the sent mail folder on your Gmail dashboard and it will be sent to your the recipient. So this is how we can send an email by following all these steps. Okay? So this is how we do the flowcharts. Flowcharts especially will be asked to write about uh, any kind of process or preparation of recipes like how to make an omelette and all or prepare tea or make tea. So now we will go with another kind of tree diagram. Right? Look at this. Study the tree diagram and the verbal text and write the paragraph describing the information given below. And this is just for the convenience of our students. I have taken from our reader. We all know about the dear departed lesson and Abel Meriwether. So look at that. Abel Meriwether, Miss Amelia Slater and Miss Elizabeth Jordan and then Mr. Henry Slater, Mr. Ben Jordan, Victoria and Jimmy. This is the family tree. Now, let us see how we can do this. The family tree tells about Abel Meriwether's family members. And Abel had two daughters, Amelia and Elizabeth. Amelia was the elder daughter and Elizabeth was the younger daughter. Mrs. Amelia was married to Henry Slater and Mrs. Elizabeth was married to Ben Jordan. So this is the brief information. Mrs. Henry Slater and Mrs. Amelia had a cute daughter and her name was Victoria Slater. Mr. Ben Jordan and Mrs. Elizabeth had a naughty son and his name was Jimmy. Both the daughters were so selfish and greedy whereas their children show a lot of affection towards their grandfather. So you can add uh, some kind of information regarding their characters also if you know well. Right? This is how we can get different kinds of family trees related to Kauravas and Pandavas and all maybe. So I hope you uh, understood and you can do this well. Wish you all the best. And if you like this video, don't forget to share and subscribe. That's all for today now. Okay.